Uh, my experience with Ebola relates to uh, time that I spent volunteering with Doctors Without Borders in Liberia. I worked in their Ebola treatment unit uh, for about three weeks. I think that the primary observation that we've made from this outbreak where we've had the opportunity to care for a really large uh, number of patients with Ebola over an extended period of time, the primary observation is that uh, fluid losses, uh, massive gastrointestinal fluid losses through vomiting and diarrhea significantly contribute to morbid morbidity and, and mortality. So ability to adequately um, estimate those losses and adequately replace them uh, uh, as well as in more advanced settings where diagnostic tests are available to follow electrolyte levels in the blood uh, and to replace those as needed uh, undoubtedly have a, a major impact on disease outcome. Yeah, I think um, m that was the scenario that we faced uh, in Liberia where there were you know, relatively massive patient volumes with a limited number of providers working in challenging situations where uh, the amount of time that you can spend in your personal protective equipment was limited by heat exposure. Um, and so in, in those circumstances, uh, uh, you have to take a different approach to management, more of a triage approach to management. Uh, and the goal there is to really identify the group of patients uh, that is able to provide a degree of self-care uh, by controlling symptoms, uh, nausea, vomiting, uh, and allowing them to replenish their fluid losses through uh, oral rehydration solution. Uh, that's that's the, the, the largest group where there's the potential for benefit. Um, there's a smaller group uh, where uh, if they're not able to provide self-care uh, yet haven't already ended up with uh, shock and the manifestations of organ failure, um, where that group, uh, if you can replace their losses through intravenous fluids, um, they will likely have a significant benefit. So um, integrating the use of, of IV fluids uh, in a systematic and routine and safe basis uh, in Ebola treatment units has been a challenge, uh, but I think over time has been an area where there's been advancements as well. You know, I think that the, the primary uh, message is that in, uh, in the setting that, you know, that, that your ability to deliver care will depend upon your resources at hand uh, and your patient load. Um, but when the circumstances do exist uh, where you have a limited number of, of patients, uh, that may be the case in, in uh, Central and South America uh, from uh, an imported traveler, uh, who came uh, and was infected uh, after exposure in a, in a high-risk country, or potentially a returning healthcare worker. Um, in those circumstances, uh, the opportunity does exist to provide a higher level of care uh, that can be done safely um, in, in clinical care settings. But establishing that safe environment is a fundamentally important process. It's fundamentally important for the healthcare workers uh, and ultimately it's important for the, the patients that they care for. And that process takes planning and preparation and practice. Uh, and, and really that is where the Americas should be at this point. They should be thinking about what their plans are and then practicing to those plans.